think you slick. Just trying to get to that bitch, that's all. That's your fucking problem. Fuck you, lip motherfucker. What you said? I said fuck you, okay? Here, check that bitch, all right? But there's one thing about niggas I do not love. Niggas are scared. I mean, if John Singleton really wants to get down and do a poetic justice, he should think about making a movie on the last poor. Some of our lives, what we've been through, how we've been in jail, how we've been through drugs, how we survived the madness, you know, now that would be poetic justice. Please stop all this madness! Stop. Thank you. Omar Ben Hassan. Baba Tunde. My name is Abdul Doom. The last poets are back. Bebop or be dead. That's the you know, be bop or be dead. Learn how to be bop or be dead. In other words, find something that's spiritual, something that's loving and kind and considerate in within the bop, within the music. Most of us were bopping when we were young and our teens anyway. That's what we call it. Let's go bop, man. Let's go bop on the dudes over here. So the bop thing was still there, but it was a sense of camaraderie and a little sense of more respect for each other than what's happening now. Bebop was about change, and, and boys, change is about revolution. That's what that's... Boys, that right? My father was a musician, so when I was a small boy, you know, we used to listen to a train or a bird or a mouse or a jack in the train. It gave people inspiration. Looking back on that, when I became a last poet, I looked back to those times. They, they were the masters, and I was like their student. When I first come to Harlem, right up there on 125th Street and Lynch Avenue, there was a people's drugstore. And when I first came up out of that subway station, I had never seen so many black people in my life. And the brothers was in the dashikis, and there was music coming out of the bars and music on the streets. Ever since then, Harlem has fascinated me. Yeah, I've been in love yeah. with it. Well, the next corner, you can find images for poems. Exactly. You can see ideas for poems. That's right. That's you can right. feel passion for Bill because each person coming down the street has a personality about them, you know, just like the brother standing right here. There you and go. here's a poem right here, you know, there's a brother I can write a poem about, you know, and this is what, you know, this is what Harlem, yes, that's what Harlem's go. all about. This is the East Wind Cultural Center in Harlem. This is where I came to be a last poet in the winter of 1969. Chicken. This was a spiritual oh, like great. oasis and all. As a matter of fact, here's a sister right here. Ah! You should be part of this. Come here. You know, the poets are the most profound thing to happen to to uh, the artistic field at that time and still are. But we weren't just about doing some poetry. It was a movement. It and was. this place was one of the places, one of the headquarters of a serious cultural movement that we had going on here in Harlem. Harlem is sweet sugar cane dancing in the wind, smiling at the clouds passing by. The last poets were born on May 19, 1968, in Mount Morris Park. The name The Last Poets actually means that after this message, this last message, there will be a revolution. And we use that to talk about this group being the, the messengers of the last word before a full-scale revolution takes place. And Mount Morris Park was the birthplace. And one day, me and Doom were sitting in um, Mount Morris Park. You know, he just asked me, he said, since you've been in Harlem, you know, what have you learned since you've been there? And I said, niggas are scared of revolution. So he said, well, that's what you got to write. They love to hear Malcolm rap, but they didn't love Malcolm. Niggas love everything but themselves. My connection to Malcolm is, a, is, 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 is the reality and the fact that we both were from the Midwest. My, co my connection was that Midwestern hustle, you know, that Midwestern thing. But Malcolm, when I came to Harlem, just like Malcolm, I fell in love with Harlem. Got, you know, transfixed by it, fascinated by it. Midwestern images threatening the horizon. Hold back the pain, hold back the rejection. But when I wrote that poem, there was just so much, you know, uh, 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 my thoughts and my memories of Malcolm and the fact that we had so much to share that, you know, people just tell me, you know, every time they pick, you know, it's like, ah, man, he's doing Malcolm, you know, it's really like you almost knew him when you were there, but, you know, just so much, we had so much similarity and so much in common, and plus the fact that I truly loved him. <laughs> my whole thing about the rap thing is that I don't hate the young boys because, uh, and I don't 
I hate them for who they are, but I don't like some of the things that they be saying or some of the things that they be perpetuating or some of the things that they be instigating, especially as far as like violence on the women or, you know, disrespecting the women. Because when we, you know, uh, when we uh, uh, were doing poetry as far as like women, we were talking about getting involved, you know, emotionally and spiritually. Public enemy. I liked uh, Melly Mel, and I, I liked mostly the earlier rappers, the African band bottles, the brothers who was not into uh, uh, speech, rest of development, yeah, the brothers who were trying to do something positive with it. If you get to where you're going, and you remember that I gave you a helping hand, you're going to come back and help me. That's what the last part is about. It's nothing, I mean, ideologically superior, what we're talking about. We're just talking about learning how to be you know, the, the Africans, the black people that our ancestors were. Just like in my poem, A.M., I said, you know, I mean, your, my house, my mother was once your mother, my father was once your father. Oh, A.M. What happened to the rhythm? The media has what been alerted to the to brave the new world with action-packed comedies full of Navy SEALs and dirty blondes. Welcome to the revolution where ex-CIA madmen go AWOL in children's cartoons. No deposit, no return. A sickness prevails in the land. The keepers of the watch are fondling the children. Youthful madness chasing games around the fire. More liquor grins dripping with the sacrifice of innocence. The blood in their eyes smile so defiantly at their wounds. Teasing and following laughter to his death. And by being back now with Umar doing the last poet thing, we're ready to be daddy and get this thing straight. Woo!